just keep mm -hmm. moving and walk around. Convince us that geometric quantization has something to do with physics. Hmm. Okay, so I will not so give you the list of the Release of the results at the beginning because, in my opinion, seminar is something like a theater, and uh, when going to the theater, uh, somebody informs me informs me that in the third act both Romeo and Julia will be killed. Then I go home. <laughs> so. <coughs> Uh, this uh, talk was prepared for, uh, for more mathematically oriented auditorium, so I will try to go rather fast uh, through the first half of it. Okay, so... Uh, and you will translate so, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. in contact with the audience, and then you will... I hope to have... Uh, okay, quantum mechanics. Nothing especially, just a summary of the features which uh, mathematicians try to mimic on the level of uh, so, uh, mathematical theory, which is called geometric quantization, which is not very successful, however, some interesting features. Okay, so the main... Uh, the main... Uh, feature which we have to mimic is to assign uh, this operator to, to the momentum and this operator to the position and moreover <coughs> that <coughs> the probability densities are... So there will be no magnetic field. Pardon? So there will be no magnetic field. Oh, okay. There might be also magnetic field, but then let us start from much uh, lower level. No, it is not difficult to... Uh, to in in one dimension, there is no magnetic field. <laughs> okay. No, okay. Let's, let's, the moment is no magnetic field. Yeah, yeah, but already on that level it is... Okay. Uh, so geometric quantization was uh, an attempt to understand how much of this structure can, can be reconstructed from the classical phase space and and that was a total failure no, 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 I will show you that, no, that the failure was not total and uh, in fact I will present you some okay <laughs> in particular and the failure was due to relativity this cannot be Geometric quantization doesn't work in a relativistic way. Okay. You will see. I don't answer this question. Partially yes and partially no. <coughs> but then at a certain step, uh, point of my talk, the, your uh, remark or your question will be answered. In particular, this does not work in curvilinear coordinates. If you pass to curvilinear coordinates, <laughs> you cannot represent momentum inside <coughs> this way, then <coughs> so the question arises uh, whether the linear or affine structure of the configuration space is necessary. Now, from this observation it looks like it, it uh, was. And also is the Lebesgue measure related with this uh, affine structure uh, necessary? because uh, the uh, scalar product of wave functions is uh, defined in terms of this Lebesgue measure. Okay, so just basic notions of classical mechanics. Phase space is a, a cotangent bundle of some uh, configuration space, and a priori no uh, linear structure is uh, in Q, uh, assumed in Q, however, there is linear structure in all these uh, fibers because momenta ha at each point, you cannot add momenta attached at different points, but momenta attached uh, at a single point uh, carry linear structure. Uh, this space is uh, endowed with a symplectic form which may be 
uh, always translated into uh, canonical coordinate and then it is uh, like that. Observables are just functions of positions and momenta. And evolution is governed by Hamiltonian vector field. Whenever you have a Hamiltonian, there is a unique way to assign a vector field to it. Namely, you take a, uh, the um, differential of H, it is a co-vector field, and you apply omega to minus one. Yeah? And this is a definition. Just uh, the physical convention is that minus sign is here. Example, an obvious example to such a field, you assign this. It is not difficult to add also magnetic field, but let us <laughs> skip it. Uh, okay. Now, the first observation is that uh, the fact uh, that we may use in quantum mechanics either position or momentum representation may be somehow translated to uh, this uh, classical uh, structure in the following way that we have to in order to describe quant uh, quantum state we have to uh, consider Lagrangian foliation of P for instance, for the position representation, it is foliation x equal constant. For momentum representation, p equal constant. So the geometric uh, picture is the following, that uh, here is this big phase space, and we choose uh, Lagrangian foliation. What does it mean, Lagrangian? Foliation is a fo foliation. Lagrangian means that each leaf of this foliation is a Lagrangian submanifold, which is a mathematical uh, term which corresponds to the fact that uh, the dimensionality of this leaf is one half of the dimensionality of P, and the symplectic form vanishes when reduced to uh, vectors tangent to lambda. And this is the case for such for instance, leaves, of course, because uh, the symplectic form contains always dp dx. Therefore, if you uh, take something which is a vector which is tangent to such a volume, it contains all only d over dx. Therefore, omega vanishes on that. And the same is true for that. And the quotient space which means the space of those leaves, practically, plays the role of the, uh, of the uh, configuration space. <laughs> so, the first idea which comes to mind when you try to think about geometric quantization, or rather of geometric uh, structure of uh, quantum mechanics, is that quantum states have to be represented by wave functions defined on this generalized configuration space. But immediately the following problem arises, namely the Galilei transformation. And <coughs> mathematicians <coughs> like yours, Suryo was intelligent. Suryo was uh, had a very deep understanding of physics, but those people who uh, somehow uh, became a face of uh, geometric quantization, like Costant, Blattner, then there is this famous book by, by Woodhouse, they did, and, uh, in my opinion, a terrible thing. They have invented a very complicated mathematical structure which uh, used for um, describe this phenomenon, which I call generalized Galilei transformation, which makes uh, their papers totally impossible to be read by a physicist. I don't know a theoretical physicist who is able to read constant paper. And I propose here, however, there is nothing new, I have proposed it already in, I believe, 
79 or something like that, uh, the following simple uh, way to describe this phenomenon. Okay, so what is Galilei transformation? In fact, it is a shift in momenta. Now, if you stick to the t equals zero, then uh, the, the q prime is just the same q. Therefore, wave functions is defined, uh, de uh, defined on the same variety. Nothing ha has changed. However, in order to describe the same physical state, you have to do something. Namely, you have to apply the, uh, the phase which at this, uh, for this particular example, is um, <coughs> Vx. Of course, the global phase, that means the additive constant in S, is absolutely non -con not controlled because this uh, <laughs> corresponds to the choice of zero in, in the configuration space, and there is no privilege zero. Therefore. Uh, any additive constant is uh, equally good, which is a good lesson, which those mathematicians didn't take seriously into account, that the uh, global phase of uh, wave functions is absolutely uh, uh, uncontrolled. What is, what is x? What is x? When uh, x? Uh, position. Position. Oh, sorry. Excuse me. Excuse me. Error. X is just Q. Excuse me. <laughs> Copy and paste. Error. Excuse me. Okay. Now <coughs> I am. Uh, I will uh, try to convince you that also this phenomenon, this transformation, can be understood in the, uh, in terms of a very nice mathematics. <coughs> Namely, the idea is that it is not sufficient to choose a foliation in order to be able to describe uh, <coughs> in quantum state, you have also choose a, a reference frame. A reference is nothing but a Lagrangian surface transversal to that foliation. And for instance, for the observer at rest, it is just p equals zero. For the observer moving with velocity phi is p prime equals zero, which means p equal m phi, which is just a shift in momentum. And now uh, there is a mathematical theorem. Next slide contains the proof of this mathematical theorem, but I will probably skip it. But OK, it depends upon the audience. <coughs> that whenever I have a foliation, Lagrangian foliage. And whenever I have two such reference frames, which means, again, Lagrangian submanifolds, which are, are tra transversal, then there is uh, this uh, situation uniquely defines me a closed one form, or a closed covector field, on this cotangent space. And this uh, phase factor is nothing just, uh, but just the primitive function. And here again, you see that global phase is never controlled. <coughs> so this phase factor, which <coughs> has to be used if you want to pass from the description of the state with respect to one reference to another reference, is just the geometric phase which is uniquely defined by what? By both this foliation and the two uh, reference frames. And, uh, okay, I <coughs> will skip the proof. It's just a simple geometric uh, theorem, but roughly speaking, it tells you that the idea of the proof is the following. That <coughs> If you take, uh, ah, so, so the, the idea is that whenever you have such a Lagrangian foliation, 
then each fiber of this foliation acquires a natural uh, linear or affine structure, which means that vectors tangent to this fiber at, uh, attached at different points can be uh, identified. Like uh, in uh, Euclidean geometry, where the notion of a free vector is possible because you may identify vectors attached at uh, different points. Please observe that I haven't uh, assumed any linear structure here at the, at the beginning. So this linear structure in each fiber follows from this foliation. And roughly speaking, the proof goes like that, that whenever I have a vector which is tangent to the fiber, it may be uh, uh, treated as a covector, as a covector on this uh, quotient space. And I don't know, <laughs> yeah, oh, okay. So this, I, I stop here. I skip the proof, but roughly speaking, whenever you have such a foliation and you choose lambda, this means that you, in a certain way, have chosen zero at each fiber of this uh, vibration, which means that any point, other point of this vibration is a different, is an arrow. What is arrow in a flat space? It is just a collection of two points, yeah? So when, whenever you have two points, it defines you a vector, and this vector is just a co-vector on, on Q. Therefore, this way, P acquires the <coughs> structure of the cotangent space. This is just a relatively simple... Does this work the same way for exfoliation and yeah, yeah, for any foliation. At this very moment, I didn't uh, assume anything. However, I, <laughs> I, I am cheating a little bit because I always assume the trivial topology. Also, when I tell you that ds defines uniquely s, of course, I assume trivial topology and so on and so on. Okay, so roughly speaking, starting with a phase space which has no linear structure, already by the choice of this Lagrangian foliation, I have uh, acquired a linear structure of each, of each fi fiber separately. Now, This is a really trivial observation, really trivial. However, it makes life much, much more, uh, much simpler. Namely, we were worrying about the role of this Lebesgue measure. Actually, you may uh, uh, skip. Ah, of course, if you choose different, uh, another measure, then you can recalculate everything to uh, to, to another measure. So everything this is, has a feeling that this measure <coughs> has no, uh, has no uh, <coughs> uh, specific role, plays no specific role. But the uh, mathematical way to forget about this privileged measure is to divide it into two square roots and to marry it with the wave function and consider not the wave function, but the wave uh, half density. And so if you treat wave function not as a scalar function, but as a half density, what is half density? I may tell you, you, you know what is density. So it is half density. So then you may forget about this privileged measure because you may uh, calculate if you choose another uh, coordinate chart, then you may uh, describe the same half density with, the, uh, with respect to different uh, measure, 
which simply means that your wave function will be multiplied by something. Well, this is trivial. Yeah. Of course, every, this is really trivial. However, it makes life very much, much simpler. And <coughs> the collection of those half measures <coughs> uh, for the mathematicians, I add uh, absolutely continuous with respect to something and so on, uh, constitutes a Hilbert space. And you really don't, do not need any, uh, any me additional measure here. There is capital Phi under the integral. Yeah, because there are no, uh, should be. two square roots, yes, which... Yes, but you, you but there should be. Yeah. Both phase five. Both phase ah, five. okay. Excuse me. Excuse me. Another error. <laughs> and now, quantization of momenta do not require any linear structure on the configuration space. Therefore, this problem that uh, the quantization of momenta works only in linear coordinates mm -hmm. disappears immediately, namely, if you take any vector uh, field on the configuration space, then it uh, defines uniquely an observable on the phase space, which is linear with respect to momenta. Now, this observable generates a symplectomorphism of P, which is just a canonical lift of the flow X from the configuration space to uh, this um, cotangent bound. Which means, if you know how to transform positions, then of course you uniquely know how to transport momenta, because the, they are uh, covectors. And so, this naive quantization rule, which worked only in, uh, ha, which was written in terms of scalar wave, wave functions, and which apparently worked only in, uh, in uh, linear coordinates, you must replace by this rule, which is universal and which works in any coordinates, nam namely that <coughs> the quantized ver version of the observable, which is linear in momenta, is just the lead derivative of this half density. <coughs> and now, of course, it does not guarantee that this uh, operator is self-adjoint. However, it is automatically symmetric. And uh, simple mathematical uh, <coughs> theorem may be proved that it is self-adjoint if and only if this field, vector field X on Q is complete. What does it mean? That it defines a global group of deformorphisms. What is, what is this high with this hat? This uh, the quantum version. Okay, so, so you big. consider an observable, which is just a classical function of X and pi, and this type of functions leads to functions which are linear in momenta. But, if, but then I have to, to have operator of moment to be, yeah. be hard somewhere, right? On the left hand side. Yeah, this is an operator. So what is this p hat then? Uh, I don't understand. It's defined by this equation, the linear derivative. Yeah, the, this is an operator. The it does not acts as a linear derivative on this is wave. Just, that's just definition. Yeah, yeah, this is a definition. This is a definition of this operator. Okay, okay. if you would supply it to the spherical coordinates and take a radial coordinate, it, that would just produce the right uh, you, PR. Yeah, yeah, yes. It, it works perfectly whenever you have. Yeah. However, if you, uh, for instance, if the field is. Uh, ah, by the way, it is. If the uh, field is complete, then the, the proof that this operator is self-adjoint consists in showing the one parameter group e to the power ih. Mm -hmm. Namely, it is just a flow 
acting on psi. If you have a complete vector field, then you have a flow on Q, global flow, and you take your psi and you simply allow it to fly over this flow. Uh, but so if it, X is not complete, in principle you may restrict it. Yeah, uh, if X is not complete, it means that uh, it is not global, globally defined. And of course, then you, either you uh, lose some part of the wave function or you are supposed to uh, acquire something from nothing. Or, yeah. Okay, this is relatively simple. All this is mathematically simple. However, it somehow <coughs> prefers the correct language. Uh, okay, so uh, to, to summarize, quantum state would be described by a wave function with respect to polarization. So in physical language, it would be in position or in momentum or in whatever representation, but also with respect to a reference frame. Because if, we, if there is a Galilei transformation, then you have to change. So the appropriate notation would be psi with those <laughs> indices, but of course I will skip them because it makes the <laughs> notation very heavy. And now the, the, the main problem is, are we able to, uh, <coughs> to define a transformation? Yeah? How <coughs> the quantum state behaves if we change the representation and we change the uh, reference? Okay, if you only change the reference, the, we already know how, how to change. But if we change the foliation, it is a hard <laughs> job. On the classical level, okay, now let us think about this question in terms of infinitesimal changes. So infinitesimally, each change of the foliation can be implemented by a Hamiltonian vector field. Just change it slightly. Now, if we want to have a polarization independent description, we must define a quantum counterpart of this change. The polarization, of course, has nothing to do with polarization. Oh, okay, yeah. This, this name was invented by, by Kostand. Uh, because he did that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, because it is, yeah, people who are, there, is man, there are many mathematicians who are working in the theory, whose na uh, which is named geometric quantization. And these people write not only papers, but books, and this term of polarization is very popular. Okay, I try to, to replace the name polarization by foliation, but okay. So if we want to uh, say how the wave function is uh, transforms under such an infinitesimal change, we have to assign a quantum operator to this uh, generator of the classical uh, transformation. Yeah? And then this group of uh, transformations defined by this Hamiltonian vector field will be replaced by the group of quantum. But, but this is somewhat misleading because we are dealing with kinematics. Changing the representation is just kinematics. Is yeah, yeah, but it is also... To ah, do with it is, no, 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 no. It is, uh, I very much like uh, thinking in Heisenberg picture. Therefore, uh, dynamics is also kinematics. Because uh, when I say uh, that we consider, for instance, P equal constant, polarization or e x equal constant polarization does not mean that in principle we have two interesting polarization because this has to be done at a certain point t and p uh, zero equal constant is completely different than p uh, t 
uh, at some different entities. So there is a lot of polarization yes, and dynamics. The change of polarization from P to X at a given time has nothing to do with the Hamilton. No, no, it is a free ride. It is just, no, 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 no. just a true, no, no, just try, no, no, no. It's for, okay, uh, choose, uh, for instance, um, 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 the harmonic oscillator. What is a harmonic oscillator? After uh, P, uh, half P, time equal, uh, no, no, omega T equal half P, the uh, X equal constant polarization will become P equal constant, and vice versa. So the, the no, no, that I understand. That's called fractional Fourier transform. And but Not only fractional. I, I will come to the point of, I will discuss fractional. I uh, encourage you to think in terms of a uh, Heisenberg picture. Yeah, I'm thinking it Okay, so the phase space does not describe initial data, but describes, the, uh, Surya calls it espace de mouvement, space of motions. Just the space of all the solutions carries uh, the natural uh, symplectic structure. And at, at the time, uh, t, at a given time t, dp t dx, say t, is its uh, symplectic structure. However, at another time, say t0, dp t1, dx t1 is the same symplectic structure on, on this space. Therefore, uh, in this, uh, um, in the Heisenberg picture, dynamics is also kinematic. But the state does not, the Heisenberg picture, yeah. the state does not depend on Yes, that. precisely, because it is just the, the whole history of the party. The state does not depend. The history is in the operator. Uh, yeah, so you may say that the wave function moves because we change the point of view. Once we see it at time t, and then we see the same state mm -hmm. at time mm -hmm. Of course it is just a uh, well, you know, technical... You know, saying that with some trivial evolution, uh, 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 state at t equal 0 and state at t equal 1 is the same, it's, it's a bit ugly. No, no, but... Well, it's 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 just, just, no, no. But it changes. No, it's the picture. No, in the Heisenberg picture, it does not change. saying that, that yet he would be transforming the positions, yes? Yeah. Besides yeah. the, yes, yes, the therefore, dynamics yeah. of the operators. Yeah. Yeah. But that means that everything flows, yes? It's, it's, yeah, yeah, but it's, it's not a problem of ideology. It's absolutely necessary. Yeah, no. This is just a, a technical way to simplify uh, some calculations. Yeah, of, of course, you may insist that uh, in the Schrödinger picture, I love Schrödinger picture, just for the sake of simplicity, please adopt the Heisenberg picture. Okay? I'm happy with Heisenberg picture, that's okay. not a problem. Okay, therefore, the uh, state, the classical state, whether we may assign uh, the quantum state, the, the uh, final result is that no, this point of view cannot be fulfilled, but at the moment, but please yes, follow me. You also have a Heisenberg and Schrodinger picture. Yes, and I will discuss it. So at, at the moment, just please uh, follow me and think in terms of Heisenberg picture, okay? Okay. <clears throat> Uh, okay, so in principle, in order to, uh, to construct this, so maybe I will uh, tell you at the very beginning that this dream of many generation cannot be fulfilled, and I will come to that point, and so on, but there are some exceptions, and the main uh, subject of my talk is a certain exception which we have discovered <coughs> recently. Okay, however, if this dream is going to be fulfilled, then we already know how to quantize some observables, namely, we know that the functions which 
are uh, uh, which uh, in a um, polarization lambda depend only upon positions have to be quantized by uh, multiplication uh, operators because these are just generators of the later formation. Moreover, we also have that linear functions have to be quantized this way. <laughs> and probably this is obvious that this quantization rule should be linear. So the following very <coughs> symbolic picture has to be considered. That here you have symbolically written all possible uh, polarizations. And for each polarization you have a state of all those quantum states. And if you change polarization on the classical level, for instance using uh, two uh, Hamiltonians, H and G, so you may go a little bit uh, over HG, then a little bit over H, X, D, and so on and so on, but you know that you may arrive to the same point using just the uh, Poisson bracket. So if there is this quantization rule, then you should go this way, either this way, and we would like arrive to the same place. But already we know that, uh, we, uh, that the global phase is not controlled. Therefore, we do not insist that this is equal to zero because the global phase can always change. So, our, so this would be, we would be extremely happy if, if a quantization rule exists which fulfills this quantity. However, this cannot be fulfilled and it is very easy to prove. <coughs> there is no universal quantization scheme, but some miracles occur. For instance, a very small miracle which is known to intelligent people, but non-intelligent people every five years discover something like uh, fractional Fourier transform and so on and so on. And so on. But intelligent people know perfectly that if you have a linear symplectic space and you take the algebra of at most quadratic observables, <coughs> then uh, the quantization is exact. However, observe that, that, but that it is exact in the sense of a projective representation. Because phase can, cannot be uh, uh, presented. If you insist in having a unitary and not re projective representation, we have to pass to the universal co covering of the symplectic linear. This uh, stands for linear symplectic group. You have to choose double covering and so on and so on. This is a <coughs> so, any linear Lagrangian foliation can be used to representing quantum state in case of linear dynamics, of course, and uh, this is uh, periodically... Only for harmonic oscillators. Of course, for harmonic but all uh, linear problems, also the motion in a constant magnetic field and so on. If you uh, know how to solve one of these problems... Yeah, of course, of course. Of course. And now there is an interesting, I believe this is interesting, that observables which are linear with respect to momenta in any of this uh, of linear splitting split, span all the space. Therefore, if you insist in having a quantization rule where the quantization of those linear observables linear in momenta, but with respect to different definition of, of what is momentum and what is position. If you want to have such a quantization rule, then this quantization rule is unique. Namely, this is a vile quantization. But of course... Yeah. And now I uh, pass to the... Uh, okay, so the, the, the lesson from this uh, brief 
uh, story of geometric quantization is the following, that it doesn't work. However, there are sometimes miracles occurs. And now I am going to present you a miracle, which, <laughs> which is very nice. I was thinking about this miracle for many years, uh, and recently uh, Piotr Valuk helped me to, <laughs> to fulfill this. So, uh, consider a spa uh, the phase space of a spin. So it is just a, a S2 square, uh, S uh, square sphere. Its symplectic structure is just a volume form. Yeah, so this is a, a classical phase space of the spin. The symplectic form is like that, which when we introduce uh, this uh, new variables becomes the feed xi. So at the first glance, it is like in mechanics. These are positions, these are momenta, except that, except that, first of all, xi does not cover the entire line, but only this interval, and phi has to be uh, periodic. So, However, take this, uh, this um, analogy seriously and there will be five minutes of something which you will reject because you will think it is crazy and it cannot work but after five minutes I believe that I will convince you that no, nah, it is not so, so stupid. First of all, extend the value of psi to the whole line which means that actually the sphere is covered many, many times. Yeah, so this means that we consider just a, a phase space which is R2 and we will try to use just standard quantum mechanics of one degree of freedom. However, the uh, true physics uh, um, lives on the sphere. And the sphere can be covered by infinitely many segments of this. Of this. Okay. So if we uh, insist in the fact that we may have position representation and the momentum representation and the transition between them is just a Fourier transform, okay, but now, the momentum phi is periodic. Therefore, the position should be quantized because if I, uh, the shift of 2 pi should, should lead to the same. Uh, which simply means that the uh, psi may, be, uh, may take values only at points where this uh, function is equal to 1. So this leads to the quantization of position. Of position. Okay, this is a very naive picture. I know at least three outstanding physicists who had this idea when they were in their 20s and they had a feeling that they have understood quantization. Ah, quantization is just corresponding to the fact that something is periodic in the universe. This is very naive. Okay. However, let us go this way. But also, Xi is periodic because as I told you, uh, the, the same uh, sphere may be described by, by this or that and so on. And we insist that uh, each of these representations has to be equivalent. Which simply means that this 2s must be equal to uh, the nh, which means that we have only n independent eigenvectors. And that also, which simply means that uh, the uh, geographic longitude is also quantized. Okay, so it would mean that the uh, wave functions, they have those deltas and uh, they belong to the Hilbert plate CN and the harmonic analysis would be just the harmonic uh, analysis of the cyclic group ZM. 
However, this picture is obviously non-physical because it needs some privileged meridian. You, uh, some meridian, you, uh, where you declare this is my phi equals zero is privileged and there is absolutely no way to change it. Absolutely non-physical. We know there's British. Yes. Yeah, That's of course. British. But outside of British islands, <laughs> we have uh, have a tendency to think that all the meridians are equal. Okay, so this is very bad. This has nothing to do with physics. However, we have to somehow to uh, release those conditions which were too heavy. Ah, okay, so if not privileged meridian, then rotations might be implemented on quantum level. Okay, but rotation is just a shift in phi. What is shift in phi? If phi is uh, momentum, then there is precisely the Galilei transformation, yeah? Which means that the wave function should undergo this uh, change. But this function, when alpha is no longer 2 pi, is no longer, is no longer uh, periodic. But this is not very bad because we have to understand that the physical state corresponding to different segments have to be the same. It doesn't mean that the wave function must be the same because here the wave function will, will differ in different segments by a constant uh, phase. Therefore, I accept this. I buy this proposal. Okay. Still, quantum states uh, on, on a sphere corresponding to different segments of the phase uh, space are equal. Okay. So, okay. So this is what I already tell you, uh, told you. So this simply means that if we want to shift, uh, the, to, to apply rotation by the uh, angle alpha, it is possible. Everything is possible. Now the wave function is, uh, undergoes this Galilei transformation and nothing uh, bad happens. However, the same argument applies to periodic, uh, periodicity in the vari variable phi. Again, only the quantum state must be periodic and wave functions may differ by a constant phase factor, which means that the Galilei transformation, in, yeah, the, the shift in psi in momentum representation is again a Galilei transformation. Again, this Galilei transformation when C is not 2 pi spoils the periodicity of this wave function, but it, uh, it is harmful, for, uh, harmless as far as the uh, physical state is concerned. So, yeah, but quantum states retrieved from different segments are the same. They differ only by a constant phase factor. Therefore, again, if we want to shift in uh, uh, vertically by C, we simply apply this transformation and it is perfectly all right. Okay, uh, so now I know how to implement a group of rotations around z-axis. Ah, it's not much. I'm already very happy, but I would like to implement the entire uh, group of uh, rotations. Okay, so on a sphere, rotations are just represented by the linear functions in, uh, in Cartesian coordinates, which means such functions. So uh, if, so z is nothing but by psi, so this we know how to do, and actually we already did on previous slides, but now what about this x and y? Uh, choose Xi truncated. Yeah, this is the. So, uh, 
Pythagoras law leads to, the <laughs> to this observation, which means that x is nothing but some function of xi times cosine and y s cos, where this s uh, this function s is simply uh, one minus uh, s square minus xi truncated square. It's um, um, the graph, so it is such a function. And now close your eyes and apply uh, apply vial quantization. Yeah, you have just the uh, function of phase space depending on positions in a bad way, but still, and momenta, and just use vial uh, quantization. And the miracle occurs, it closes. It closes. By the way, just let me uh, make a short remark. When I told you that there is no universal quantization rule, this means that some bundle is curved. Something is curved. And you, uh, there is no way to avoid it. However, this, uh, this something which is curved may still be flat on uh, small sub, uh, subspaces. Yeah? Just, I don't know, if you uh, take a hyperboloid, it is flat on those straight lines. Yeah? There are many uh, curved spaces which are maybe, uh, which are flat if you restrict yourself to some, uh, to small fragments. And this kind of this mirror, something which uh, is <coughs> uh, curved, becomes flat when you apply it to this space. But what has been correct in this context? Uh, is that, it the, is the uh, same as the representation of spin one. You will see, this closes. This closes. The group of uh, um, uh, after quantization, it, it gives you the correct uh, uh, the but This is the, the yeah. algebra of the yeah. angular momentum. Yeah. Yeah. So mm -hmm. this is, but that's, is this already yeah, leads that to mean yeah. that we get just the standard. Yes, yes the same. I will get. Yeah, yeah, but this already follows from that. Mm -hmm. <coughs> okay, so if this n number of degrees of freedom n with this. Uh, we define 2L plus N, yeah, then we have such a situation. Now L is just a notation, we introduce L. Then for N uh, odd, which means L integer, this pro uh, projective representation, because I never control global phase, however, once uh, the projective representation is uh, obtained, I may ask myself whether I am able to fix phases in an intelligent way uh, to manufacture a unitary representation. Okay, it turns out that it is possible in this case, it is impossible in this case, and so on, and so on. Now, just a, <coughs> a, a flavor of how does it work. The um, vial uh, quantization is a relatively complicated formula. It is not so easy to write down ge uh, general formulae. However, if the uh, phase function is factorizable, then this formula uh, simplifies considerably. So this is the uh, quantization um, valid quantization for factorizable function. <coughs> so the z function is a real, which means <coughs> rotations around z axis were, have already been uh, quantized. You know it. It is very easy. Because. But x and y functions are more um, are more complex. However, you see. Uh, some uh, Fourier transforms are necessary, but Fourier transform of cosine and sine is easy because the, the sum of deltas or uh, and, uh, mm, 
difference of uh, two deltas. So these formulae are relatively simple. Well, what and does this mean? notation mean delta with a subscript H bar? Uh, the, yeah, delta at the point X and delta at point minus X. This is just a matter of okay, okay, so this is bar. delta of delta zero F alpha. Okay, this is just a mathematical uh, way to say I didn't know delta use H bar. zero is simply delta and delta at H is simply delta, oh, okay, at X is X and delta at X is delta of X minus H. Wow. Oh. H bar, X has the dimension of action? No. Of, of course, on, on the, uh, on the, uh, on alphas, yes, because the S Xi was, uh, Xi was S times some cosine and S has uh, of course. because the symplectic space has uh, uh, the units of symplectic space is uh, action. No, everything works, so you may translate yeah, everything of the form. Yeah. The form. Pardon me? This symplectic form has the dimension. Of okay, so so then you obtain this formula and uh, formula and this formula is correct and so on and so on. So let me just skip this and coming to the end. So th this way we obtain the standard spin algebra. Okay, this simply means that the state of the spin, which of course is uh, may be written this, uh, this way, it can also be written in terms of wave functions, namely for any choice of z-axis and the zero meridian, quantum states uh, oh, again, uh, can be described by a wave function in position representation. Therefore, there are those deltas on uh, n privileged meridians uh, no, sorry, um, parallels. They are separ separated in such a way that the volume, uh, the surface between each of them is equal to uh, H, H bar. Therefore, uh, the quantum state is defined by the, those coefficients. And that's all. A transition between two such descriptions is provided by representation of the rotation group. Also, you may use momentum representation, which means that you, uh, if you just choose uh, zero, if you choose your drainage, for instance, then wave functions lives on privileged set, namely n uh, meridians. You have those deltas. And uh, again, uh, there is this uh, collection of coefficients, which uniquely represent the wave function. Uh, however, the, uh, this is just a curiosity, although I treat it seriously because in a way one can say that the spinors uh, have been discovered uh, from symplectic geometry. Symplectic geometry implies spinors and so on. But there is one thing which I hope will also be uh, interesting for the physicists, namely Go farther. If you have wave function on R2, either in position or in momentum representation, then just define uh, linear function. Of course, um, it can be written this way. This representation is more, uh, say, safe for, for those who remember that Psi already contains deltas and uh, multiplying deltas may look <laughs> dangerous, however, it is delta in this direction, delta in this direction, so everything works perfectly. In fact, it's a kind of a um, 
like a splot point here. So convolution. convolution, yeah, this kind of a convolution. So everything works perfectly. So the Wigner function is also insensitive to changes of the global phase. So this, all this story that the global phase in different segments is different, it doesn't uh, make any harm to that. Wigner function is, however, <coughs> at the first glance, it looks pretty bad because uh, the uh, non-zero value, you obtain only where those privileged <laughs> uh, meridians uh, uh, meet those privileged uh, parallels. However, however, now, this is for instance for n equal to 2, that means for a qubit, for a qubit wave function, but there, we have already an action of uh, of um, uh, of, uh, uh, of a rotation group. Therefore, you may average it over the uh, the entire group. Treat it in a uh, passive way, which means that we do not change the quantum state. We only change its representation. And this way, we obviously get something whose uh, integral is equal to 1, because the integral, the global integral of, wave, of the Wigner function will be 1. Therefore, it may, may be decomposed uh, as 1 plus something whose mean value over sphere vanishes. And now there is a conjecture. We are working with Piotr Valuk on this conjecture, because we still were unable to perform this. Namely, conjecture is that for a given spin LH, this function phi, phi uh, yeah, F, which corresponds to the mixed system, spans the space of all multipole functions up to 2 to L poles. And this language simply means that for a qubit, n is equal to, so we will have three dipole functions, and this is precisely the, uh, the dimension of uh, mixed states of density matrices for spin two. Mm -hmm. Now, for spin one, yeah. uh, for spin one uh, excuse me, for spin one, there will be those dipole functions plus Five di uh, 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 oh yeah excuse me excuse me <laughs> this is a oh, uh, quadrupole here five quadrupole functions excuse me three dipole five quadrupole seven octopole functions oh, excuse me. and again which means that in uh, spin one case the uh, space of mixed state is eight-dimensional, and this is exactly. For the next spin, we have to add seven octopole functions, and so on and so on. So the lesson is that higher multipoles do not fit into a small sphere. This is a kind of the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, because higher multipoles Corresponds to shorter um, uh, wavelengths, roughly speaking. Okay, and I'm I'm very happy with that, and I believe that this Wigner function could, okay, I, I wrote provides, but could provide a new tool to analyze such properties because. This way, those mixed states split into those monopoles, and there is an obvious hierarchy on, of those monopoles. The, uh, okay, and <coughs> possible applications in quantum informatics, yeah, just because if you have a tensor a product of two such 
systems then you can uh, consider states of the big system and again I think that this hierarchy could somehow uh, discriminate because uh, more mixed or more entangled and less mixed or less entangled states. Okay, this is, yeah. <laughs> this might be quite useful, but the question is, can you get this without all this geometric quantization just by saying that you represent the states of a qubit, say, in a different way, with these discrete points on the but, sphere. But all this, but for instance, uh, the, I believe that the uh, crucial point here is uh, this Galilei transformation. Yeah, the crucial point is that you get a different representation of qubit states. Yeah, yeah okay, but how to, which I have useful. discovered, yeah. Yeah, yeah, of course, as a, as a, as a finite outcome, of this, I will want to present this and that's all. Oh, yeah. However, uh, I, nobody would never think about such okay, yes, yes. without I understanding. The crucial point is Galilei transformation. But Galilei transformation has nothing to do with spins. This, that, that was your uh, inspiration, but the final physical no, but result. If you, no, what does you know about no, 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 no. It simply no, no, no. means that if I have, <coughs> if, uh, I have this uh, symplectic structure of the uh, uh, on the sphere, on the sphere then there should be which the is nothing the but d phi d eta. Then, uh, no, sorry, it's not was xi. Then, a priori, the rotation in, in uh, phi, if you insist in having a uh, wave function periodic, is a nonsense. Because the, yes, yes. the shift in phi is nothing but the, by the uh, Galilei transformation. Not Galilei, because there is no. Translation of his name Galilei is a bit misleading for physicists here. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Shift in momentum yeah. is Galilei. Yeah. 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 Shift in momentum is. Okay. And this is quasi momentum because this quasi is not exactly. But finally, I treat it as a momentum. Yeah. I treat it as a momentum. I. Uh, give to both phi and psi the status of R2 and I only, only say that my uh, quantum state must be such that there is some periodicity or almost periodicity because after all this function, the crucial point is that these wave functions are not uh, assumed to be periodic, only quantum state. Okay. There was a lot of work of getting the Wigner function for the discrete case and is this yeah, yeah of course uh, most of them yeah, yeah most of them are uh, okay because this is a natural but is this uh, equivalent thing. to some of these procedures as far as i know nobody has discovered uh, this miracle that it works because abstractly it is very easy just to consider r2 and say ah one of my variables is closed which means the other one is discre uh, discrete and then you may define the inner function of course this is very uh, natural however the crucial point is that the uh, group of uh, uh, that the entire group of rotation can be quantized. So this picture... Well, the, the, the final result is quite intriguing and interesting mm -hmm. in it because there is a lot of physics going with the block sphere, etc. Yeah. Yeah. You are yeah. here okay. describing the block sphere, mm -hmm. the states of the block sphere in a different mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. Because this idea that <coughs> com, uh, compactifying one variable mm -hmm. uh, implies uh, discretizing mm -hmm. another variable is just as old as, uh, as quantum mechanics as at the very beginning people were thinking about it. No questions? No thank you.